Hello, everyone. It's so wonderful to see such a full house. Um, we're very happy to have you here. My name is Betsy Peterson. I'm the director of the American Folklife Center here at the Library of Congress. And on behalf of all of the staff, I want to welcome you to the latest edition of our homegrown concert series uh, here in Whittle Pavilion. And again, welcome. The homegrown series, for those of you who do not know, is an opportunity for the American Folklife Center to present some of the very best um, traditional music, uh, dance, and narrative arts. We work with a, a range of folk arts coordinators, cultural specialists, ethnomusicologists from all over the country and beyond to, who help us select the very best performers to come here and share their wonderful traditions with all of us and all of you. Um, so with that said, I also want to say we will be webcasting this, and this is also being recorded for our archive, so you will be able to hear this in the future, and others will be able to hear that, hear this in the future. But with that said, if you have a cell phone turned on or any electronic devices, please um, turn it off now. We'd greatly appreciate it, unless you want to be in our archive also. Um, <laughs> And now, uh, just a word about our performers. Today we are going to hear California-grown, Brooklyn-based Eva Salina, who is a groundbreaking interpreter of Balkan Romani songs. She was raised in the U.S. Balkan diaspora, and Eva's mentors are some of the greatest living Balkan musicians. Eva's duo, duo partner, Peter Stan, is a Serbian-Romanian Roma accordionist who is known for his playful innovation and soulful improvisations. In their collaboration, Eva Selina and Peter Stan pick up and continue an interrupted legacy of female vo vocal traditions in Balkan Romani music, amplifying voices of past generations of Romani women musicians, even and Peter employ or demonstrate passion and a commitment to keeping these singing traditions alive while also teaching and working with younger generations um, of people in the Balkans and the Balkan diaspora. So with that said, please welcome Eva Selina and Peter Stan. Thank you. Thank you, and, and thank you to all of you for making the time in your day to come here and be with us. It's a lot more fun when you're here. Uh, the, the, the acoustics in the room are great without all of you, but they're good with you, so they're better with you, arguably. Uh, we'll be sharing with you uh, songs that we love, songs that we've found together or separately, uh, songs from traditions that Peter was born into and that, as my bio says, I grew up in, which is, in fact, true, and I'll get into a little bit of that later. There's one more cell phone. As, uh, as these songs don't really exist without, if that's yours, you know it. Um, these songs don't exist without their historical and social context, but they also don't exist for us without personal context. So we'll be sharing uh, some of what informs our participation in the music. There are, there are many choices when you fly. There are many traditions to work in, uh, and we'll just share a bit with you of, of why we are so connected to, to the music that we love. Uh, and hopefully you'll feel it uh, beyond any explanation I could attempt. So we'll start out in Romania with a song from the repertoire of Ana Hosu, uh, a song that I found on a compilation many years ago. And it's about a fickle heart Hopefully there are none of those in the room today. Uh, Peter's family is from the border region uh, of Serbia and Romania, uh, Banat. So there's a really uh, striking mix of those, those traditions and those musical languages and spoken languages as well. So the song is sung in Romanian. Thank you. Thank you. 
There's a there's a couch that looks like it could be a little cozier in the back. You might have to peek through the tripods, but thank you for coming out in such bountiful numbers. Uh, we uh, we had it's quite a luxury for us to play a show early in the day actually because what it meant was that we drove down from New York City last night and we got to wake up in the place where we were going to work, which for those of you who are musicians or have spent time on the road in such a fashion, you know. That rarely happens. Usually you drive for eight hours, you roll out of some van and have to transform into a, a professional version of yourself. So we are very lucky to have been so graciously hosted here. Uh, thank you to, to Theodosia Austin and Parker Jane for being our friends and hosts. Uh, it's really what makes life rich is to be received with warmth and hospitality. So you're all actually part of that by being here today. Um, we're going to dip down into Serbia, and we're going to stay in Serbia for the most part, uh, with one or two small exceptions. Peter and I met, uh, I like to say, half my life ago, because it was practically half my life ago. Uh, a quarter, Don't date yourself. <laughs> it's more like a third of your life. But uh, So I, I'm from California, but I was so connected to the different Balkan communities that I started to travel on my own to New York as a teenager. And uh, Peter was playing in a brass band in Brooklyn that I knew some musicians in the band, and I was, I think the statute of limitations has passed. I was too young to be in a bar, but I was there. And I was in the back room, and I was singing a few songs with the band that Peter happened to be playing in, and he came up to me and said, who are you? <laughs> I said, well, who are you? Like, I think we both fell off the same truck <laughs> somewhere. And, uh, and so that, that began our friendship, and we toured together with, with that band, with Slavic Soul Party, and would always be sent out ahead of time to warm up the crowd and realize that that conversation had an intimacy to it that you wouldn't find in the, these large ensembles, this big, massive wall of brass sound that has really come to dominate uh, has to come to dominate the world music community, and especially whereas, uh, where Serbian Roma music is concerned. And so, I, while I love that music, while we both love that music, it's electrifying, it's soul-shaking, there is a different way that your soul can be shaken by this music, and that is the intimacy, the powerful intimacy of the late night acoustic space. So you just have to imagine that it's 12 hours later in the day, the, the work day is done, and you've you know you've eaten, you've drunk, and you're amongst people that you love, where you can experience the multiplicity of your emotions, and that is really the space that the music that we play together occupies, uh, a space of longing and sorrow and joy and hardship. It's country music, actually, <laughs> basically, uh, but it's these are songs that speak to the vast spectrum of human emotions and experiences. Um, and so we invite you to come along. It's going to get happy. It's going to get sad. It's going to be mostly melancholy. But it is a beautiful day, so you'll get to walk back out into the sunshine. 
We'll go now to uh, Shaban Bajramovic, who is a legendary Serbian uh, Roma singer. And I've, we both spent a lot of time working with his repertoire. Peter was his uh, musical director on the last tour of the, when he came to the United States. And so he occupies a very special place uh, for us. This song is about someone who drinks too much and can't quite get it together, but is not exactly willing to take responsibility for the situation he's found himself in. Pianitza. Thank you, thank you so much. You know, in, sometimes in Brooklyn we can't even get ten friends to show up to, to a you know a Friday night show or a Wednesday night show. So this is really um, very moving that you're here in such force. So uh, that beats the you know the cost of admission is perfect actually. So <laughs> you know one of the, one of our favorite things uh, in in New York where we live is to perform in public places. Uh, Arts and accessibility is something that is deeply, deeply important, and we have good allies uh, who are doing a lot of public programming. But for me, you know, I'm not 
often in a position to, to buy a fancy ticket to see a performer that I don't know. And so these kinds of chance meetings, these opportunities that we have to, to play in parks and libraries and, and public, public places, it's when we have the most uh, kismet and these kind of synchronicities of, of meeting up with people. You know, the Serbian uh, foreman on the construction team on 32nd Street who walks by and we're playing a lunchtime concert and he like throws money at us and you know asks for his favorite song and then goes back to work. And those are the kind of moments of real, real connection uh, that, that, that verify and validate and affirm, I think, what we do. And it's pretty obscure, actually. <laughs> And not in the Balkans, but, but here. Um, and I, I thought we would just kind of, even though we've sung a couple songs for you, just introduce ourselves musically in, in a different way. Um, I, it's just to clarify how I was raised in these traditions. I was exposed to Balkan music when I was uh, seven years old. Uh, so it is more native to me to sing in languages that are not my primary language than it would be. You know, For me to, to tell you I was gonna sing Appalachian ballads is actually, would be more disrespectful <laughs> uh, to that tradition. And so I was very, very lucky in the early 90s uh, to have opportunities to study and learn from people who had recently come in, in, the, in the aftermath of the conflicts in the Balkans in 1989 through 92. Uh, many, many wonderful musicians, particularly in my case from Bulgaria who had had uh, jobs in state folk ensembles up until 1989, had come to the United States and be working kind of entry-level, non-language dependent jobs, finding out that they could be making real money teaching what they loved to, to willing and, and able and excited Americans. So as a child, I didn't have to kind of write down phonetically lyrics from some old 78, but I was learning in the folk tradition directly from, from people. And so I thought that I would uh, sing a Bulgarian song for you, just to kind of show you my, my real roots within the region uh, musically. And uh, this is a song from southern central Bulgaria about a young person who is very disappointed with their mother who has chosen to marry them to someone that they do not love. They have, this person has taken to bed. I say this person because the person is in a beautifully non-gendered in the song. Uh, it, the person has taken to bed, refuses to move, and says, Mom, bring me my, my balama, my small lute, and I will uh, softly strum and sadly sing and remind you, Mother, how much we loved each other. Can I have a B flat? Stani mi mai chu
you know, as tradition evolves, it's very important. I can I can speak for both of us when I say that it's very important to to know when you when you depart and how you depart from performing traditional music in a traditional context. And I think we both, Peter and I, often, as much as we work in extensions of tradition and much as we're interested in kind of exploring how these are living traditions, it's so important for us to stay rooted and to come back to songs in their very traditional forms. Uh, with, with some of the Roma songs that we play together, one thing that is a little bit different than, than an approach to kind of a, a, a kind of a strict folkloric perspective is that within these, within these songs, and I'm speaking to different, many different Roma traditions from within this region, because there's not one, you know, there are infinite dialects linguistically and musically. Uh, I think it's, it's not, an, not an incorrect generalization to say that something that is shared among those traditions is that 50% of the song is about technical precision and understanding a stylistic language and understanding the, the dialect specifically of, the, of Romanes that you are singing. But 50% is who are you inside the song? And how do we know that it's you playing or you singing? And so for me, as someone who didn't, you know, who doesn't, like if, you, if I do 23 and me, you're, maybe they'll tell me you have some Roma, but I've never done it. I don't need to prove that on that level. But it was really, really helpful for me in kind of positioning myself within tradition to, to know that it was not only desired, but required that I make the songs my own. And of course, with mentorship and guidance from respected musicians uh, in those traditions, it's been you know a fun one to navigate. But also, you know, improvisation is so essential, uh, playfulness with rhythm and with melody, that there's a lot of room to be yourself inside the songs, and no one can demonstrate that better than Peter Stan. So he's gonna. You want to play about your childhood a little bit? I always joke that to Peter. <laughs> Play us a song about your childhood. No. <laughs> Do you want to tell him anything about you? Um, Might as well. Yeah. I, I'm sure. <laughs> Serbia, Romania, they would all come to the same place. So uh, we would have to learn very fast all the different styles. <laughs> and that was in Queens? Yeah, in Ridgewood. In Ridgewood, yeah. We would, the whole uh, neighborhood of Bolton from all over. And uh, yeah, we just have to learn like all different styles. Like, bam, bam, like the way to learn it was to like get embarrassed on stage, not to do it. <laughs> Shame is a valuable teacher. If you take one thing away from this hour with us.
there are many great accordionists in the Balkans, but I feel pretty confident that there is only one Peter Stan. <laughs> And one of, the, one of the things about Peter and I starting to work in a duo is that coming from, coming from performing with a brass band where Peter always added, added flavor, of course, uh, as, as only he can in that imaginative and playful way, uh, but yet somehow he was always a little bit lost and a little bit covered up and, and you know, settling into how spare a duo is and kind of just really spreading out within the music uh, was a, has been a fun experiment, I think, for us also to move into more listening spaces, uh, even with some of the songs that we performed in the, in the brass band. But after we started performing as a duo, which was mostly taking repertoire that we already shared from different projects uh, and adapting it for the smaller format, we started to think about making a recording uh, together as a duo, and we started to think about what kind of repertoire would be best suited for that. And uh, I had been in love for a while, and Peter had known and loved this singer for many, many years. And this is a woman named Vida Pavlovich, who was a Serbian Roma woman from actually the same part of Serbia as Peter's wife is from. <laughs> Uh, who was a phenomenal singer who had a very tragic life and died before her 60th birth birthday of complications from uh, alcoholism and probably just deep, deep sadness and, and struggle in her life. And yet was this incredible singer that people loved within the region, but her voice didn't really travel beyond it, outside of it. I often think you know, of these singers who have had these resurgences and, and the kind of the renaissance of their careers in their, in their 60s and their 70s and their 80s. And I'm thinking, you know, Cesaria Evora from Cape Verde, mm. Chavela Vargas, uh, you know, people who were able to kind of sing through all that age and experience. You know, I would have loved to hear Vida collaborate with Kronos Quartet, for example, you know, or come here. And so, when we started to think about working on her repertoire, songs that she sang, um, older songs, not songs that she had written necessarily, but songs that she chose that had meaning, I thought, you know, how, how is our participation in this music? And, and you know, as we're all self-referential humans, how is my participation uh, in, in this tradition going to contribute something to legacy? And I thought, if we can bring the songs and the story and a, a piece of the power of this woman into new contexts, into new places like like the Library of Congress, like the Newport Folk Festival, like the Brooklyn Folk Festival, like Bryant Park in New York City, like you know, then like this accordion festival in Portugal where we went last year. Then then it actually it inspires people to go and listen and and learn more about these singers who existed in relative obscurity. So we're going to spend a little time uh, with with Vida now. Vida, of course, we all know in Spanish means life, right? Vida means vision in Serbian, and it's a very powerful, powerful combination, I think, of meanings. And also, we, the album that we made together is called Sudbina, and Sudbina means destiny, and it's like, kind of like Fado in Portugal, kind of the same concept of how we're, we are wrestling always, all of us. With, with the things that we have chosen and the things that we cannot control. And so that's kind of an overarching theme in, in the songs of Vida, the first of which uh, is sung in Serbian that we're gonna perform for you. And it um, was the first song that I heard and her, mo her most famous song. Uh, it's called Ostala je pesma moja. Anybody speak in here? Yeah, yeah, good, cool. So the, the singer, you know, oftentimes the songs that are sung in these kind of bars and restaurants that Peter was mentioning are topical songs of love that kind of have, there's no entry fee, like anybody can relate to these songs. They're, they just stay right on the, the, the tropes of the surface. But this song spoke so directly to the experience of being a woman and being a singer who at the end of her life realizes what she has to leave her children are the songs that she sang. And so it's this very tender and poetic so uh, song about the relationship between the singer and the song. Vida herself was uh, 
wanted very much to have children, was unable to have children, and it was a source of great sadness for her. But I think she had, she was probably godmother to many, many, many children. So she leaves her songs to her metaphorical children. Ostalia pes mamoi. For the next song, you have to really imagine that it's much, much later in the evening, that you're exhausted, that you're at what the Bulgarians would describe as the hour of uvozhavash li me ili ne me uvozhavash, which basically means, do you respect me or do you not respect me? <laughs> so it's kind of that song. It's the time when people start repeating songs, and you know that you, it's time to step away from the table and go to sleep. But this is a song for that time of night, so I will, uh, I will put my... Uh, 
blackout curtains on. I'll close my eyes and try to enter into that space for you. No. The song is called Dema Miro. Give me peace because you're eating my heart. my 
مرو داد چهر تو مرو داد چهر promised you melancholy and we hope you were not disappointed. <laughs> that song, I knew that we, we had to record it and I was terrified of it. You know, sometimes when you're learning a song or interpreting a song that's been sung so incredibly by this performer, it's singular performer, you listen, you listen, you listen, you internalize, you listen to live versions, you listen, you see how the song breathes and flows and changes from day to day and then at a certain moment you have to stop listening because you have to let the song start to take up residence but that was a long process <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad we got there because it's you know the wonderful thing about working in folk traditions is that you actually get better as you live more and uh, I've aged out of every other market so I might as well <laughs> stick to traditional music uh, and uh, you know there there are there are really really fantastic silver linings to working in traditional music, which I believe is actually a radical act these days <laughs> to work in a non-commercial tradition. So, um, but if you do like what we're doing and you enjoy it, you can actually take it home without all the storytelling <laughs> in the form of a CD. Uh, we do have CDs, so we'll be happy to send some of those home with you, both of this repertoire and a large ensemble performing. Uh, this, the songs of Shaban Bayramovic recorded in, in Serbia and uh, in New York. So if you need a dance party, we also can offer you that. But if you want to just cry, we can also give you that. You know, we need, we need both. So um, I'm so glad so many of you have watches because I utterly lose track of time. Uh, thank you for stopping time with us today. I'm going to change our program because I just realized I didn't put my favorite Vida song of all, which is Pusti uh, me da živim. So sung in Serbian, basically the song says, leave me alone. <laughs> Let me live my life. Let me try to find happiness without you. <laughs> it's not dedicated to any of you in this room. <laughs> Just to be clear, but you can dedicate it to whoever you want. <laughs>
živim Pusti me da volim Pusti me da živim život svoj Pusti me da živim Pusti me da volim Pusti me da živim život svoj O, život je moj O, sudbino moja Sreću moja O, život je moj O, sudbino moja Sudbo moja, ne Sreću moja Some of you have to return to less enjoyable, maybe, but more productive parts of your day. I don't know. Hopefully, this was productive on the soul level. But uh, we just want to say a word of thank you to all of you, to uh, the wonderful community here at the Library of Congress for hosting us, to, to Thea and Nancy and Stephen and many other people, to Jay and John for running great sound, making us feel completely at home. Uh, and. There are many people in this room that I feel very lucky to have known through different parts of life, but there are so many of you that I've never met, and our lives revolve around friendship, essentially. So if you enjoyed what you heard, if you have questions, if you want to come speak to us, 
uh, that enriches the experience, hopefully, for us all. So please don't be shy. You don't have to buy CDs, but you can if you want. <laughs> there are two for 20, and I don't have change. <laughs> but uh, we're going to just end with a happy song, if that's right for everybody. It feels like I'm looking at a lot of watches in the front row, and it seems like it's the right moment for, for the last song, the one unapologetically happy song. <laughs> it's from Shaban. I'm looking for a young wife, also not directed at any of you. Uh, I'm looking for a young wife. Uh, I hope that she'll bear me many children. This is what the song says, just to be clear. And I found her. She was a meter tall, which if you're, con you know, if you're familiar with metric system, it's not very tall. And, and just as round, she bore me nine children. They all sing and play music. And I'm so happy I'm going to buy lemonade and boza. If you know what boza is, you're going to get the joke. But it's like a fermented wheat beverage that most people drink and spit out immediately, unless you grew up drinking it. Uh, anyway, I'm going to buy boza and limonada for everybody and just celebrate in community. So enjoy with us. Thank you. <laughs> Ya 
Madam Nipota Rani. Thank you. Thank you. Eva, Selena, Eva, Selena, Eva, Selena, and Peter Stan.